Did you know? Africa was not originally called Africa, it had a completely different name. Wow! This video will reveal what Africa was originally called, why the name changed, and who changed it. Pay attention. Before we begin, remember to subscribe and leave a comment below. Let's get into it. Back in the days, in a world teeming with mystery and wonder, there existed a vast and enchanting land known to many as Africa. It was a place of awe-inspiring beauty, where sprawling savannas stretched out as far as the eye could see, and majestic wildlife roamed freely across the plains. Within this breathtaking landscape, a rich tapestry of cultures flourished, each adding their unique colors to the vibrant fabric of the continent. But beneath its surface allure, Africa held a secret, a hidden truth that lay buried within the annals of its ancient history. The name we now associate with this vast territory was not always so. It came to be through a series of fascinating encounters and linguistic transformations woven together by the ebb and flow of time. In the depths of antiquity, when explorers and adventurers sailed uncharted waters, the land we now call Africa was a realm of enigma and wonder. Ancient civilizations flourished in its fertile valleys, leaving behind remnants of their glory for future generations to unravel. But as the world expanded and boundaries were pushed ever outward, the landmass remained unnamed, its true identity waiting to be discovered. Centuries passed, and the tides of exploration carried intrepid souls from distant shores to the mysterious continent. Among them was a renowned explorer, a seeker of truth and knowledge, who would forever leave his mark on the pages of history. His name was Leo Africanus, a man whose wanderlust led him on a remarkable journey of discovery. Leo Africanus, born as Al Hassan in Muhammad Al Wazan Al Faisai, hailed from a land far removed from the shores of Africa. As a young boy, he embarked on a perilous voyage across the Mediterranean, venturing into the unknown. His travels took him through bustling cities, arid deserts, and verdant oases, as he documented the lands he encountered with meticulous detail. It was during his sojourn in the heart of Africa that Leo Africanus stumbled upon a revelation that would forever alter the course of history. He encountered the people of the land, listened to their tales, and learned their languages. Through his interactions, he gradually unearthed a name, a name whispered by ancient tongues and passed down through generations, a name that resonated with the essence of the land itself. This name, spoken in countless dialects, was a testament to the land's vastness, its diversity, and its profound significance. Leo Africanus, captivated by the beauty of the word, saw its potential to unite the world in recognition of Africa's true identity. And so, with a stroke of his quill, he etched the name Africa onto the pages of his writings, forever transforming the way the world would perceive the continent. But why did Leo Africanus choose this particular name? Was it simply a matter of happenstance, or did it hold a deeper meaning? As he delved into the tales and legends of the land, Leo Africanus discovered that the name Africa was derived from the ancient Roman term Afer, which referred to the people who inhabited the northern reaches of the continent. To Leo Africanus, this name encapsulated the spirit of Africa, a land shaped by the myriad cultures and civilizations that had thrived within its borders. It paid homage to the indigenous peoples who had forged a deep connection with the land, nurturing its bountiful resources and giving birth to a tapestry of traditions and customs. And so, the name Africa spread like wildfire, carried on the winds of exploration and embraced by scholars, cartographers, and adventurers alike. It became the cornerstone of a shared understanding, a unifying thread that wove together the stories of countless nations and peoples. As we embark on this journey of discovery, let us remember the remarkable tale of Leo Africanus, the intrepid explorer who, through his encounters and revelations, bestowed upon the continent the name that has echoed through the ages. Let us celebrate the richness of Africa's history, the diversity of its cultures, and the enduring legacy of its ancient past. For within the heart of this vast and enchanting land lies a truth that transcends borders, a truth that reminds us of the power of names and the stories they tell. So our quest to uncover the real name of Africa takes us back thousands of years to the land that birthed civilizations and shaped the course of humanity. It is believed that the name Africa has its roots in the ancient land of Egypt, renowned for its towering pyramids and enigmatic pharaohs. In fact, 
The ancient Egyptians referred to their land as Kemet, meaning the black land, a reference to the fertile soil left behind by the annual flooding of the Nile River. However, the origins of the word Africa can be traced back even further. Rooted in ancient Greek and Latin, the term carries intriguing meanings. In Latin, spica symbolizes brightness and sunshine, while in Greek, frink evokes a sense of awe and dread, akin to the spirit of horror. These linguistic nuances reflect the diverse and contrasting aspects of the African continent. But also, many centuries ago, when European explorers set their sights on these uncharted lands, they sought to categorize and conquer the unknown. It was during their expeditions that they bestowed the name Africa upon this remarkable continent. The Romans, known for their conquests and influence, further popularized this name in the Western world, forever associating it with the northern part of Africa. It is important to note that Africa was not always known by this name. Throughout history, its indigenous people referred to their land by various names, each carrying its own significance. Among these names were Otizes, Kofi, Libya, and Ethiopia, each encapsulating a unique aspect of the continent's essence. However, as we venture further into the annals of time, we stumble upon a forgotten name, whispered by the winds of history, Ekebulan. It's the original indigenous name for Africa, long before the Europeans and Romans arrived. This ancient name held a profound meaning, translating to the Garden of Eden and a mother of mankind. This name, shrouded in obscurity, is said to predate the term Africa itself. Ekebulan, derived from the ancient Egyptian word Kobla, translates to land of the spirits or land of the blacks. It symbolizes the deep connection between the African people and their ancestral spirits, their collective resilience, and the indomitable spirit that has endured throughout the ages. Some may argue that al Kebulan sounds Arabic, but it is not of Arabic origin. Rather, it simply bears a resemblance to Arabic due to the use of the prefix al, which is common in Arabic language and means the. Thus, the story of Africa's name is a captivating tale of exploration, conquest, and the evolution of languages. From the European adventurers who first labeled it to the Romans who popularized it, Africa's identity has been shaped by the encounters of different cultures. Yet, beneath the layers of history and linguistic transformations, the indigenous name Alkebulan reminds us of the continent's deep connection to the origins of humanity, making it a true Garden of Eden and Mother of Mankind. As we traverse the vast expanse of Ekebulan, we encounter a profound diversity that defies imagination. From the bustling markets of Marrakesh in the north to the vibrant townships of Johannesburg in the south, Africa reveals itself as a mosaic of cultures, languages, and traditions. Each region unveils its unique stories, telling tales of triumph, struggle, and the indelible mark left by the ancestors. In recent times, there has been a growing movement to reclaim Africa's true name, embracing Ekebulan as a symbol of pride and empowerment. Advocates argue that it is time to shed the shackles of colonialism and reclaim the narrative that has been shaped by outsiders. By resurrecting the name Ekebulan, they seek to honor the land's rich heritage and restore a sense of self-determination to the African people. Overall in conclusion, as our journey nears its end, we have uncovered a profound revelation that resonates with the essence and identity of Africa. The forgotten name, Ekebulan, transports us back to ancient times, to a land that has witnessed the rise and fall of civilizations, the intermingling of cultures, and the birth of extraordinary stories. Ekebulan, meaning Mother of Mankind or Garden of Eden, encapsulates the deep-rooted history and significance of the continent. It is a name that evokes a sense of primordial connection, reminding us that Africa is not merely a geographical location but a cradle of humanity, where the earliest footsteps of our ancestors were imprinted upon the earth. This ancient land is a tapestry woven with the threads of countless cultures, languages, and traditions. From the Berbers of North Africa to the Maasai of East Africa, from the Yoruba of West Africa to the Zulu of Southern Africa, each community contributes its unique colors, rhythms, and narratives to the vibrant mosaic that is Ekebulan. The resilience of Africa's people is awe-inspiring. Despite enduring the trials of colonization, slavery, and exploitation, the spirit of the continent remains unbreakable. 
It is in the face of adversity that the true strength of Ekebulan's inhabitants shines through. They have preserved their traditions, languages, and customs, safeguarding the ancient wisdom passed down through generations. Ekebulan's legacy calls upon us to recognize and honor the rich tapestry of cultures that exist within its borders. It beckons us to celebrate the diversity of its people, to cherish the multitude of languages spoken, and to appreciate the myriad of artistic expressions that emerge from its fertile soil. Embracing Africa's true identity as Ikebulan is not merely an act of historical correction, it is a transformative journey towards unity and respect. It is an invitation to shed the preconceived notions and stereotypes that have clouded our understanding of the continent. By acknowledging Ikebulan, we affirm our commitment to dismantling the narratives of division and embracing the interconnectedness of all human beings. Let us embark on this path with open hearts and open minds. Let us engage in dialogue, exchange knowledge, and foster connections across the vast expanse of Ekebulan. By doing so, we contribute to the collective consciousness that celebrates the richness of Africa's heritage and paves the way for a future where all voices are heard, all cultures are valued, and all people are united in their shared humanity. In this final stretch of our journey, let us carry the spirit of Ekebulan with us, forever honoring the legacy it represents. May we continue to learn, grow, and appreciate the multifaceted beauty of this ancient land and its people. Thanks for watching, please remember to like and subscribe as this would help our videos reach a wider audience. See you in the next one. What are your thoughts? Please leave your comments and opinions below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to We Love Africa. Follow, share, and like our videos. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.